Hello everyone, in this tutorial I will show you some tips and tricks to use with the Curve Bezier and the Figure Tools in Clip Studio Paint. First I will review the basic tools and then I will show some examples. I hope it helps. Ok, let's start. Tool Basics First I will show you how the different figure sub tools work. Let's start with the straight line since it's the most basic. With the tool selected, if we click and drag, it will create a straight line. We can change the angle. If we hold down shift, it will lock the angle in a predefined step, in this case, 45 degrees. This can be helpful to create horizontal or vertical lines, or we can define a specific angle and repeat it with this. We can also set up a start and end points to automatically taper our lines. This is really helpful to create the speed lines, for example, for a comic. Next is the curve tool. We click and drag to create a line and then we can curve it by moving the control point. When we like the curve, we click to confirm it. It's a basic operation to create simple curves without much control. We can also hold down shift to lock the angles and set up start and end points. Next is the polyline tool. With this tool we click different points to connect them, creating a continuous line. If we click the, last, the first point it will close the line. We can also lock the angles and if we want to confirm a line without closing it we can press enter or we can click close line to always close the line no matter if we click the first point if we confirm it it will auto close the line if we want to delete a point we can click it or if we want we can press the delete key to delete the last point created. If we click in the line preview we can add points. Then if we hold down control we can move the points to refine our line. Then let go to keep adding points. If we want to close our shape in the middle of a line, like in an arrow, we can hold down ALT and click on the line to create a new point and then we can confirm the shape by pressing ENTER. Then we have the continuous curve tool. This tool has different curve modes. If we select the straight line, it will work just like the polyline tool. Then we have a spline. This is a really intuitive way of creating curves. We just click between points and it will create a smooth curve. We can also use the enter key to confirm the line and use close line to auto close any line we have and it will close in a smooth way. The other mode is quadratic bezier. This creates a curve between three points, two control points and one direction point. This gives us more control over the final curve. We can move the direction point to change the relationship between the two control points in each curve. Since all the curves in the line are made by three points, we can achieve refined and smooth results. We can create corners by holding the ALT key. If we click an existing point, it will turn it into a corner, and vice versa. This helps us create mixed lines in our designs. Next, we have the shape tools. The first one is the rectangle tool. We can click and drag to create a rectangle. If we hold shift while clicking, we lock the aspect ratio to get a square. 
To start from the center of the shape instead of the corner, we can select start from center. This way we can create the square or the rectangle from the center. We can select adjust angle after fix to change the angle of the rectangle after we create the shape. We can also add round corners. We can play with the ratio to achieve different roundness levels. We can also change the graphic style of the shape. We can select between fill, line or a combination of the two. With the lips tool we can create circular shapes. Like before, we can hold down shift to create a perfect circle. We can start from center and adjust the angle. And we can also change the style. The polygon tool lets you select the number of corners when creating the shape. We can also apply the same operations as before. Since version 199, we have a new curved mode called the Cubic Bezier. This mode has its own subtool preset called Bezier Curve. This mode is really powerful. If we click between points, it works like the polyline. We can click the starting point or press center to confirm the shape. If we click and drag after setting an anchor point, we create a direction point. The length an angle of this point will determine the curvature of the line. When we add another point, it creates opposite direction points. This gives us a finer control over the line. If we hold shift while dragging the direction points, it will lock the angle. Here we can change the minimum value and if we click a step of angle, when we approach it, it will snap. While drawing, we can add points by clicking the line. We can also delete points by clicking them. And we can press the delete key to erase the last point. If we hold control, we can move the anchor points and the direction handles to edit the line. We can hold Alt to change the corners. If we click on an anchor point, it will change into a sharp corner. If we click and drag in a corner, it will create the direction handles. If we click and drag while creating a new point, it will create the direction handle for the next curve, but it will retain the sharp corner. We can also get a sharp end while closing the line and modify the last curve. We can also change the style of the shape. Ok, those are the basic tools. Try to get familiar with modifiers and the different settings. Vector layers. Ok, first let's create a vector layer and with the rectangle tool selected we can see that the graphic styles are disabled. This is because in vector layers we can only draw lines. I created a couple of shapes to show you the power of vectors. With the operation tool, we can select and modify the vectors. We can move the points, scale them and rotate them. Using the correct line, we can change the control points. We can move them and also the direction handles. We can add control points and also delete them. We can switch the corners. We can adjust the width of the line and also the opacity.
And finally, we can also split the lines. We can use other tools to modify the vectors, such as Pinch, Simplify Vector Line, and Redraw the Width. Quick Tips To help us create our designs, we can go to View, Grid to enable the Document Grid, then make sure Snap to Grid is enabled. Now we can use the Grid to help us create our designs. This is really helpful to create banners, logos and badges. We can create selections using the cubic pressure by selecting the polyline selection tool. We can also use the new cubic bezier to create curved rollers and use them to paint with decorative brushes. Now that we are familiar with the tools, I will show you some examples on how to use them. Inking. I will show you how to ink a simple drawing in a vector layer. I mainly use the bezier curve and the transformation tools. As you can see, I overlap the lines, then I use the vector erase to delete the overlapping areas. To draw the ponytails, I activate a symmetry ruler and draw only on one side. I modify the control points until I'm happy with the result. This is a simple final result. Logo types. Using the same techniques as before, I will create a monoline logo. This process is quite simple, but we can achieve great results. Here is my final result and a mock-up. I design a simple cat logo. I added color in a raster layer with the fill graphic style. Here's my final result. Here I use the same techniques to quickly create a lettering design. It is pretty fun, you should try it with your own letters. Even if the base sketch isn't perfect, we can achieve a smooth result using the best year curves.
here is my final result. Symmetry. Here I use the symmetry ruler to quickly create interesting designs using the figure tools. Here are a couple of my results. Masking. I will teach you how to mask an object from a photograph. First, we create a vector layer, and then with the Bezier curve, we carefully trace over the edges of the object. Take your time to refine the selection, and remember you can edit it later since it's a vector layer. Once we finish the selection, we go to Select, Convert to Selection Layer. Now we have a selection layer and we are going to fill the lines we created. I use the Bucket tool, then I load the selection and, and I use the selection to create a layer mask in the photograph. This is my final result. Perspective. Ok, I will show you how the figure tools work with perspective. We can create a perspective ruler. Here I have a grid underneath as a reference. And then when I work with the, the rectangle tool, you can see it snaps to the perspective. This works with the polyline and the ellipse tool. So it's really handy to create perspective designs. Ok, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you can apply some of my techniques on your own work. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.